And when you do talk, be respectful, be courteous, be polite, be contrite, and apologize when necessary. Okay, we want you to be, uh, we want you out there on YouTube, man. We want you free. We don't want this happening. We want to be able to hear what you and your reporters and your guests have to say. And your callers, everybody's suffering. Because you can't keep it in your pants, man. I'm talking about your tongue. Keep it in your pants, man. Keep it in your mouth. Unless you're speaking from the Spirit of the Lord. And the Lord's not telling you to say GD this and GD that. That's like saying that God wants salt water and fresh water to spew forth from the same stream. No, get away from the, from the bitter water, the salt water. No, you want fresh, pure water coming out of your mouth only, man. And if you fall, catch yourself immediately and admit it. And say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> You're not doing that. Once in a while, you'll do it. And then you revert back to doing it. You're putting your foot in your mouth, man. And you're just not helping yourself or anybody else. It, quite the contrary is happening. It's detrimental to the cause of exposing these people. The whole Infowars thing, man. So, God, I mean, I'm trying to help here, man. But, you know, we've got our eye off the metaphorical ball. And that is these, these kingpins, man. That's, what, you know... It, 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 They've got us at each other's throats, regular people. Let's not let them do that anymore, damn it. But we still, I say we're all Alex Jones now, just like I said, we're all Tommy Robinson. Well, we're all Alex Jones. If they're going to subvert your free speech, well, they're doing that to everybody. You know, society, uh, they're deaf and mute to, uh, you know, fixing problems or any discussion about it. Uh, they just want to... Um, you know, put band-aids on stuff, temporary fixes, and it's all about throwing money at the problem, which they know in the long run is just going to make the problem worse, like the $50 billion a year they spend to end uh, people uh, having to live homeless because they can't afford their housing costs. Problem's gotten uh, profoundly worse, dramatically worse, but they still, you know, they keep on just uh, beating their head against the wall, practicing insane social, political, and economic policy, and uh, they don't want to have a discussion about what it's going to take to fix it. God, we're so screwed up, man. Locally, we got major fire off uh, I-5 north of here in Redding. From Redding to the Oregon border, a stretch of well over 100 miles is shut down. That's a big deal, man. Truckers are stressed out. They're losing a lot of bread, time and money and all that crap. So it's really something else. For all intents and purposes, California has been burned to the ground. So, sorry to the rest of the nation, but there's nothing left of the state of California. It's because they keep putting out these fires. That Mother Nature starts, that underbrush grows up, the fire burns a lot hotter. You know, last week I talked about my beliefs on punishment penalties. I really don't believe in the concept of punishment. And, of course, that means the, the concept of capital punishment. But, you know, I get why people, you know, they, they, I get it. You know, I, but, you know, if we don't act spontaneously, then we have malice of forethought. We are premeditated and our hearts are impure and evil. And that's what we got to keep from, you know, prevent from happening. Our hearts from getting hard. It was predicted in the Bible. That in the last days, the hearts of many will wax cold. That's what's happening here. So it doesn't work. We've got to, we've got to confine people. I do believe in confining people. But in a, a scenario that's going to help them to awaken and say, Hey, it's right. I was wrong. By helping people, guiding them to see the light and the error of their way is going to be much more effective. We're going to have much lower recidivism if we put people in ethics rehabilitation centers where we just teach them why what they did was wrong. But when it comes to you know crime prevention, society doesn't want to hear what I have to say about a basic income, just like an extension of Social Security from 18 on up. Yeah, say 30 grand a year, right? Seems generous enough. 
based on the cost of living. But um, how you know how great a basic income would be for your local economy? Just think all those poor people that don't have money to spend at the businesses, suddenly they have money to spend. It'd be fantastic for local businesses. Fantastic. And I told you where that's coming from, a Tobin tax. Money that's not even going to be missed. It's sitting on, sitting on Wall Street as just numbers on the scoreboard. I mean, he, and that money could be in circulation. And it's going to go right back into the same hands. The poor are going to spend everything they make anyhow, so. <clears throat> it would nip it at the bud if we did that. Be so much cheaper. Be so fiscally prudent. You know, I uh, tried to use an analogy last week about supply and demand with the blacksmith making cutlery. Listen, the point is that the blacksmith's going to find easier and easier ways to manufacture. Okay, so he will, his supply is going to go up automatically. That means the prices can come down. Supply and demand, people have enough cutlery, they're not buying it. The cutlery inventory, his stock builds up and it gets cheaper. That's what happens in supply and demand. That's why the worth of your money goes up automatically if you don't interfere, if you don't meddle through government policies, which then becomes crony capitalism, which is by default fascist when the government is involved in working against the best interests of the people at large, regular people. And that's what they do because the more taxes they raise, the bigger paychecks they can write themselves. Do you understand how this thing works? So it's really evil. But capitalism is, it has to do with supply and demand and free market and um, competition and easier and easier methods of production so that we have an oversupply, which means stuff gets dirt cheap or free and leads to freedom, therefore. And uh, automatically increases your worth of currency and a manipulated market uh, does the opposite. So be very clear, it's not hard. The child can understand these things, really honestly. I was going to talk about an episode of Dateline where this woman was kidnapped but she was actually just looking for a little time away from her husband and kids I think because um, she had a little tryst with this guy that uh, was very close to being arrested as a kidnapper until she got busted what a what a story that was bizarre asking for 50,000 there's money involved always money the devil's always in the details but this woman turned out to be bat crap crazy man Look up uh, the Google definition of too big to fail and the Urban Dictionary on too big to jail. Check those out. I found it very interesting. The mainstream media on Colin Kaepernick, his endorsement of Nike. You know what? I actually support his right to do what he did, but I mean, I understand the other side of this thing, too, that, look, he could do it on his own time, but he's being paid, and he's a performer, he's out there, he's hired to do a job. Is that really the right place to do a job? I mean, it's just like me going to my job on the clock and me standing out there on somebody's lawn when I'm supposed to be mowing it and saying, you know, I this is my cause, so everybody, you know what, it, it's inappropriate, but I still support the guy. I mean, you know, I can't help it. You know, I, I, to me, the First Amendment, Second Amendment, both sacrosanct. The only, only two things that keep America still livable. So let's not condemn Kaepernick too much, you know what I mean? And Trump is wrong about that. If people have a right to be critical about America. It's your friends that give you constructive criticism. Okay, it, it's your enemies, uh, your sycophantic yes-men enemies that let you fall into a pit because they don't want to rub you the wrong way, you know.